So, um, just to go over what we've learned from last year and uh, my predictions from last year. Well, there was one thing that we talked about a lot, which was we really encourage our staff to be on social media, to tweet, and that um, we really encourage those one-to-one -one relationships because the food bank is much more than an organization. It's really about the people that work there and how we're connecting and inspiring people to help end hunger in Austin. Well, um, there's a possible downside to that strategy because you really shouldn't put all your tweets in one basket. So we've had some uh, people lose interest at our staff um, at the food bank and Twitter where they've decided to be more listening and um, less interacting. Um, we've also had people leave. And um, luckily, we do have one account that's more branded. It's Events for Good. Events, the number four and good. So if you want to follow any hot events in Austin that are, have a social um, charity aspect to it, most of them, of course, are the food banks, because we have about 700 events about throughout the year that support us. Um, we have that um, account on Twitter. But um, you'll see a, a, an emerging strategy to really support the way that people will interact or choose not to interact on Twitter from, um, from our organization. And I think that other nonprofits are also seeing that and how do you manage the, the strong need to do stewardship with also the need to promote your brand. So that was definitely a very big lesson learned this past year. Um, the other thing is uh, I now do social media and online marketing full time. When I was here last time, I was also doing advocacy and public policy. So my predictions were a little uh, schizophrenic there, but now I'm completely focused like a laser on social media and online marketing, and it's awesome. Um, and the other thing that we learned that was that worked out really well last year was that mutual um, opportunities for success really do work. I was predicting last year that was going to be a, a very big trend to really think about how do you create these great opportunities for synergy with not only uh, the for-profit community but also other nonprofits. And uh, one of our biggest shining examples was the Austin Food Bloggers Project, which I'm not sure if any of you know about that. It was uh, 13 food bloggers. They blogged for one week based on the food that we actually distributed that day at a food pantry. And they created recipes. They talked about it on their blogs. And that generated 71 blog posts. Um, the reach was amazing. The, the recipes were awesome. Um, and of course, affordable and, and healthy. And also, it really brought up new um, stories that um, you know, working at the food bank, you, you really do see one aspect of it. When you introduce food bloggers and the way how they see the food uh, issues in Austin, it really, really opened our eyes and created new content and new dialogue. So that was really, really awesome. And uh, I, I hope to see more of that in the future. So let's see, wishful thinking for 2011. So this is my predictions, but it's also a little bit of what I hope to see in the nonprofit space. And really, to talk less about engagement and more about stewardship. So sure, we can get people to like our Facebook page and to retweet, and that's awesome and that's great. But at the end of the day, we need results. We need people to, to advocate, donate, volunteer, you know, get some skin in the game, and actually create a vested interest in ending hunger because the problem is really serious here. And you know, for other social services, nonprofits in town, the issues are also very, very great. So. You know, it's really thinking about how are we using social media to create these unique opportunities for stewardship. Um, one of the things that we did in our development department was uh, we created a customized video using YouTube, and it was a private channel, and we created these videos for each major donor. We had about 50 that we kind of sampled out. And then what we did was we sent them the video as a thank you. Not asking any for any money, just, hey, thank you. What that resulted in was not only an increased donation, but in some times an additional gift. And also, they were able to, they felt more comfortable talking with us when before they were like, okay, I'm just giving you your money, that's great, I love you guys, but I really don't want to talk to you. Now they're talking with us, now we can do even more. And we're using social media to create unique opportunities for stewardship. We also did this with uh, Congressman Doggett. He came out and visited us at a, at a kids' cafe. We created a video. He took the video, put it on his own YouTube channel. We blogged about it. So how are we creating? How are we using social media to create unique, syndicatable opportunities for engagement? It's really, really working well for us. We're spending a lot more time thanking and thanking and thanking, using social media for stewardship, and so that when we do ask them for something it has a real value, and it has real, um, that we actually understand where they're coming from and that we really care about them and their opinions. So that's uh, my first prediction. My second prediction is 
increased fragmented online giving. And what that means is that we have an increased amount of opportunities for donating online. So Network for Good has many partners. We have Help Attack. You can actually donate through Amazon Payments. You can do PayPal. We have a PayPal account, which is contributed at AustinFoodBank.org, by the way. Um, you can put lots of different widgets. You can shop online by putting a browser thingy and that money that you use for browsing will raise money for the food bank. There are a lot of different great ways to raise money for your nonprofit, um, and you don't necessarily have to go to that to that nonprofit's website. What that means as a marketer is how do you manage your brand? How do you manage how people are talking about you? So I expect a little bit more messy branding, but also I think there'll be a lot of great lessons learned and a lot of new opportunities. And how do you really um, simplify your message so that it doesn't really get um, too crazy, but also how do you empower people to give in the way that makes sense to them? Um, I think those just be really, really exciting. And to see if also if, if anything uh, consolidates between some of these different um, platforms that are out there. So a lot of good opportunities for the food banking world. Very exciting. Um, the other thing is um, mobile messaging. I'm not sure if anybody reads Beth Cantor's blog, but she's been uh, blogging a lot about how mobile giving isn't available on, um, on iPhones. And we have an iPhone app, I-P-H-E-E-D, I feed and eat, haha. Um, and we were also not able to raise money um, directly through our, our iPhone app. We're definitely watching that for the future and hopefully we'll see how things develop. And we're also spending a lot of energy on making sure that our, our website and our communications are mobile friendly. So also mobile will take a greater role in stewardship and part of the online giving process. So um, again, using all these different technologies to support stewarding, to support thanking, and to really encourage end of use engagement. So it's not about liking, it's about how you're getting from point A to point B. Um, the other part, the other uh, uh, prediction that I have here is improved but not great social media cause marketing campaigns. And uh, marketing is capitalized for a reason because uh, uh, I'm not sure if you've also read Andrew Blog's recent blog post um, on charity <coughs> chat on the Statesman about the Pepsi campaign and the recent Walmart giving campaign, which we actually participated in the Walmart campaign. And what that means for the capacity of a nonprofit. The Walmart campaign was put on at the biggest time of fundraising for food banks, which is December and November. So we're spending a lot of energy and efforts in supporting this campaign, this Facebook liking campaign, which could really raise a million dollars, which is awesome but also diverting our marketing and development attention away from what we generally do best when, when you're raising about 40% of your money you know, throughout the entire year in a two month span. There's a lot of pressure. So how do we create cause marketing campaigns that are respectful for the fundraising cycles of these nonprofits that are out there? And also, what does it do to the actual capacity of nonprofits? Our nonprofit at the Food Bank, we're a 70 person team. We actually have a marketing team, so we'd have probably a little bit more capacity than the average nonprofit in Austin. But what about the small nonprofit that only has like 20 people? What do these campaigns do to their, their energy and their time and also making that local connection? So um, I, I hope, really that nonprofits get a little bit better self-esteem about their brand and that they do have value and that what they bring to the table is much more than the, than the cause itself. That they also have expertise, they have marketing teams, they have processes in place, that it is a business and that that also is something they can bring to the table. And also how can they capture those constituents if they don't get the big prize. So I'm hoping that I can thank the thousands of people who have uh, liked our Facebook campaign through Walmart, and uh, I can you know, reach out to them, but we'll see what Walmart allows us to do. Um, I'm not saying that these things are bad, but um, nonprofits should also hopefully demand more um, and uh, a better, uh, have a stronger dialogue so that their brand and, um, and their constituents and their community is really protected um, in these uh, in these cost marketing opportunities. Um, so, next prediction. Um, I'm hoping to see more data as told from a nonprofit perspective. Um, one of the great things, and I'm I guess an old school programmer who kind of codes by hand, and I'm slowly getting into reading and all these other things. I'm I'm getting there. I'm getting there. But things like jQuery and HTML5 is making programming actually exciting for people like me, and I'm actually learning how to do these things again, and how we can use 
data from a variety of sources that are much more easily available through census, through the US Department of Agriculture, and visualize this data. So if you go on Hunger is Unacceptable right now, you can click on, um, this, it's a Hunger Maps project where we use uh, Google and we used Google Maps and overlaid uh, uh, poverty data all the way down to the census tract with our partner agencies and where you can get WIC and where you can get um, food stamps and where you can go to a farmer's market. So how are we using data with um, YouTube or Google or, or I'm sorry, or uh, uh, Google Maps or all these different technologies and, and putting them together in a way that has meaning for people who are interacting with the nonprofit. And it's, no, it's the nonprofit that's telling that story, not necessarily an analyst or a consultant. So we will definitely have a very different take on how we think about data, and I think that these tools will make those things and those opportunities more accessible and definitely more exciting. So check out Hunger is Unacceptable. Thank you uh, for um, hungerisunacceptable.com for all sorts of infographics and visualizations and, and uh, shenanigans of that sort. Um, the other things that I want you to look out for are uh, websites like Usha, gosh, I'm going to butcher this, Ushahidi, U-S-H-A-H-I-D-I, Cubic Planning, Swift River, and HungerMaps.com. We're doing some really, really great work that will help nonprofits to uh, be more empowered. The last one I have is uh, Improved Opportunities for improved for uh, Responsible and Citizen Empowerment. What I mean by that is looking at things like the UT uh, shooting, looking at uh, things like the, uh, the recent um, a uh, snow uh, storm in New York, and how citizens are really expecting immediate response, and they're giving out a lot of data through um, through Twitter, through Facebook, through me through mobile messaging, and how are we using that data to manage crisis management? Um, the food bank works with FEMA and Red Cross whenever there is a major hurricane. So, how are we using this data to empower people to take advantage of? disenfranchised networks that may not be using Twitter or Facebook, but they might be networking through mobile messaging, and how are we using that to uh, really empower people so that they can respond and really you know, take advantage of their natural human desire to do good. So it's a lot in the future. I'm really excited, and uh, stay in touch with us on austinfoodbank.org. Thank you.